Early season sprint and jumps weight training. Just what should you be doing? If you've been following the recent series of videos that I've been doing on pre-season training, you'll have seen various ways that you can get your long triple jump and sprint training off to a great start in the fall winter period. Today, we're going to take a look at weight training and how you can get that off to an equally great start. Let's start with a bit of context, with a bit of sports physiology. When you train one energy system and another, and they are different energy systems, for example, the aerobic and the anaerobic energy systems, you're going to get what's called an interference effect. As one method of training, for example, interval training or longer distance running, affects the other one, for example, weight training, which is a short-term or a lactic energy system. So it's important to try to get synergy between your training means in order to get maximum development and adaption. One day you may be targeting your fast twitch muscle fibers through weight training, for example, and then the next day you might be doing slower endurance-based tempo training, for example, which is targeting your slower twitch and transitional fibers, fast twitch transitional, to a greater extent. So if you were to do that for a long period of time, there could be a state of confusion between your muscle fibers and the way you're physiologically adapting to the different stimuli. So if you follow the integrated block undulating periodization jigsaw type of approach that I do, you're less likely to get interference between the various training methods as we're always using anaerobic elactic methods. So we're training fast twitch muscle fiber all the time or predominantly so. It's important to train similar energy systems at the same time to get maximal adaptation. And for long jump, triple jump and sprinters, that is easier to do than for example, a 400 meter hurdler with their greater needs for endurance and speed endurance in particular. So we will start doing pretty heavy weight training at the beginning of the training year. We don't really build up too much to being able to lift heavy. Of course, the weight lifted will be lower than after potentially three to four weeks of training, but we will be doing three to four sets of four, five, six to eight repetitions at a medium to heavy, heavy weight. And that weight will increase over time. That will fit in with our drills training, our more elactic and anaerobic drills led training that we're doing. To follow such an approach, you've got to be a well-conditioned athlete and familiar and training mature in terms of being able to lift weights. You won't be able to do that if you've not spent a couple of years, a couple of seasons, lifting lower intensity weights, for example, and learning the proper technique. But having said that, there are ways in which you can develop power at an early stage in your developmental career without doing cleans and snatches, for example, should your coach or you think that they are valid. Loaded jump squats, for example, are a great way to develop power triple extension without placing too much unnecessary strain on the body. Elsewhere on the channel, you'll find various videos that go into detail about weight training for long jump, triple jump and sprints and the reasons for doing it and some of the reasons for not doing it. And also I go into detail about one of the methods that I follow in particular, the triphasic method and the potentiating methodology as well, where I combine weights with plyometrics, which again is something that you should do from the onset. And I believe that to be one of the crucial things that brings about positive adaptation as you'll get a potentiating effect from one of the training methods to the other. So from plyometrics to the weight training exercise and vice versa, providing of course the weight training and plyometric exercises work similar muscle groups over similar ranges of motion. So for example, a loaded jump squat and a drop jump would be a great pairing, as would be a step back lunge and a series of straight legged hops, for example. 
So it's all about pairing exercises that work together and you'll get a greater fast twitch muscle fibre potentiated response from doing that. Hopefully the information provided in this video will help you better understand how you can organise your weight training at the beginning of the training season and how you can avoid complications by training two different energy systems, for example, over a too long a period at the same time. If you have any specific questions on the content of this video or others in this series or others on the channel in general, then do leave a comment in the section below or through my other social media. And good luck with your training and if you're still competing with any competitions that you may still have. If you're interested in the extremely accurate and portable free lap timing system, then do get in contact with me.